chapter 3, part 2. Soon I realised that some of the cats were disappearing but me and Lily still remained. I didn't know if it was a good thing to stay or not. Did they all feel happy to go? Or were they now suffering in some horrible torture house with a terrible family like the one that came by the other day? I was still a kitten, around 10 weeks, so I didn't know how to read minds then, but it was slowly starting. I could read our humans. They were easy to read. I suppose you didn't know that we cats are telepathic? All animals are. Humans are too until they get to around seven or eight years of age about the age that nasty boy who came by the other day was, and then it was washed out of them by older humans who thought they knew better. But Lily and I were ignored. It was obvious. I think Lily was secretly glad. She was getting used to the comfort this plague offered us, and our humans were very nice to us. They gave us extra cuddles and played with us with toys they dangled in front of us like fishing rods. If truth be told, I was getting used to it too. At least we weren't out in the cold struggling to survive. Here we had food, water and a roof over our heads. However, could we stay here forever? Somehow I don't think we could. That night Lily was more worried than usual. I've noticed that people seem to say you're beautiful and, you're, and you have nice markings when they see you. But they don't say that or or anything nice about me. Oh sis, don't be jealous, I think you're very pretty too. But I'm black all over, jet black. I don't think people like me as much as you. Some even think I bring bad luck or that I am evil. But I'm not, I just want to be loved. I put my paw against it. Oh sis, we all want to be loved. I want to be loved too. I want my mummy. Me too, said Lily. We both sat in deep sadness, contemplating what was to become of us and why humans always seem to think they knew best when it came to us animals. Something else I thought about too, Lily said. What, I asked. She looked at me sadly. What if they separate us? They can't do that, I said, trying to comfort her. In reality, I believe they could and my sister wasn't stupid. If they do separate us, we will never see each other again, she said. We can send each other telepathic thoughts and love, I said. It won't be the same, Lily said. What could I say to that? Then we had better make sure we get adopted together then. Lily was doubtful. How are we going to do that? Watch me and learn, sis. As I tried to sleep that night, I thought about what Lily had said and grew really worried. But I tried to stay strong for her because she was more of a scaredy cat than me. I was fast becoming a tough little kitty. I scared easily like other cats, but I also noticed that I liked to face my fears head on. I hated hiding. I believed in conquering my fears, otherwise they would never go away. I loved how I was becoming a strong and determined little kitty. Something was missing from my life and I knew it. A mother. I wanted a mummy so much. I wanted to be held in warm loving arms and kissed on the head, just like that lady that had done to me in my dream. I'd been having nice dreams lately, lots of them with some loving arms holding me. Those dreams were the best, even better than the ones where I'm catching birds. One day I was feeling extra sad, and when I was that sad, I wanted to eat. It made me feel better. So I meowed at everyone that came near. One of our humans came in and started putting food down for us. But he started at the bottom end of the room and it took ages for him to get to me. I was so hungry, I could eat myself. I don't know why they didn't feed us enough. I was skin and bone when I first came in. I heard them say that. One of them said I had a big head too. Well, it was not surprising I was wasting away when no one gave me any food. Sit down, said Lily. Why, I said, I'm hungry. You won't get here any soon now if you keep climbing up the frame and squealing like that. Can't you see he's busy? Shut up, sis. I know what I'm doing. Don't tell me to shut up. I'm older than you. No, you aren't. How do you work that one out? I was born before you. You were the last one out, Mummy said. She couldn't have, I said. She died, remember? I can't remember that, Lily said. They threw us out. I didn't see Mummy dead. 
I strutted over to her. She was sitting by the empty food bar. You are so naive, Lily. Why did they give me that name, she said, sounding none too pleased. Yours is better. What, I said, Sophie? Yes, I like it. Well, you can't have it, it's mine. She was getting on my nerves, really. Why did I have to be related to her? The sooner I got out of here, the better. She had turned nasty and jealous, and I didn't like that side of her, especially since I spent most of my time looking after her. I was still there two days later. I didn't understand it. People came in and really liked me. I could tell, but then they went off and chose another cat instead, like the big giant fluffy cat who didn't look very nice to me. He looked quite stupid too, and all he did was sleep. Oh well, some people like different things, I guess. The people who, who took him looked like they didn't care much about anything. Some humans didn't like any of us, which was a good job really, because they had ugly dark auras around them. Yes, those lights I saw around humans and other animals were called auras. I remembered that after a while. I was growing after all, so I learned more things. Well, I remembered more things from my other life before this one. Later that afternoon, a man and a woman came in and I didn't like the look of them at all. Regardless of their auras being almost black. They did horrible things, not just to animals, but children too. They were no good. Someone had to do something about them. But what could a mere little kitten do? And one trapped in the prison too at that. They stood in front of mine and Lily's pen. What a cute little kitten, said the woman. Leaning forwards, I pulled myself away. Her breath stank. She is just what we're looking for. She looks a bit like a Bengal kitten. Is she a Bengal? Not that I know of, said our human. Her fur is absolutely beautiful, said the woman to the man. He was ugly with small dark eyes and a black beard and no hair. He smelled awful too. Whiskey breath. Suddenly he sent me a horrible image of cats having their fur ripped off while they were still alive. Bored alive and lots of screeching painful meows. Meow, I screamed. They was, this was so wrong. They were coming here to get cats to make into fur coats. Help, sending cats to make fur coats and other things. Help. A human looked at me with a worried look on his face. He could sense I was upset. I tried to send him a picture I had just seen, but he didn't pick it up. Dumb human, wake up. We'll have to carry out a home visit first, he said, just to see if it's suitable for rehoming a cat from us. Oh, well, okay, said the woman, her square face suddenly turning red as they looked over at the man she came with. As she looked over at the man she came with. We didn't know that. They looked... They both looked like they wanted to get away. Thanks, mate, said the evil man, scratching his beard. We'll think about it. And with that, they went away, leaving a trail of ugly, stinking smoke behind and a black, smoky aura. After our human saw them out, he returned, looking a bit nervous. He looked at me and actually spoke. Lucky escape there, he said, giving me extra strokes and cuddles as he put down some food for me. I rubbed my head against him. I was beginning to like him a lot. He had read my mind. Athena, don't you like your story?